So solving this over the complex numbers for x, obviously I'm going to have two solutions because I've got uh, two variables here, x, which is being squared. So the first thing to do is to isolate um, the variable. You want to set it equal to zero. You want to set this whole thing equal to zero. So in order to do that, um, actually what I'm going to do, the easiest way to do it instead of squaring this out yet is, is to first uh, take care of some of these other things. So let's subtract 5 from both sides. You get negative 8. Now let's divide 2. So 3x minus 2 squared equals negative 4. So you know they're going to be imaginary, right? And they said solve over the complex numbers. If they said solve over the real numbers, you would say right now no solution because you can see that the solutions are going to be yeah. imaginary. But now instead of now since I've done what I've done here, I don't need to foil this out. I can square. take the square root of both sides. So 3x minus 2 equals plus or minus, don't forget there's going to be two of them, plus or minus 2i. And that's because the square root of 4, whoops, sorry, the, the square root of negative 4 is equal to the square that's root right. of negative 1 times the square root of 4, and that's i and that's 2. Right? So would that just be just 2i or not? It's, it's plus or minus 2i because remember when you put a square root into a problem, if I said x squared equals 4, what does x equal? Oh yeah, plus or minus. Plus or minus 2. You have to put that in because you have to account for the fact that there's a positive and a negative solution okay. to that equation. So now I add 2 to both sides. And now I divide both sides by 3. There are your two answers. So writing it in, in they probably want you to write it in standard form, which would be 2 thirds plus or minus 2 thirds i. Those are your two solutions. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm.